Thanks, Mike, uh, Naomi, for uh, having me present today. Uh, my name is uh, Brian Friedlander. Um, I have a background in school psychology and assistive uh, technology. I'm on the faculty um, at St. Elizabeth University, where I, I oversee graduate programs in special ed and te teach courses in assistive tech. So um, I'm going to go through this quickly. Usually this is about an hour, but um, we'll get we'll try to get through as much as we can. So some of my goals are kind of share you some new things that are available and also to help students um, kind of reduce that cognitive load when they're when they're taking notes and when they're learning. And hopefully some of the tools are easy to use. Um, I, some people refer to me as Dr. Gadget. I love gizmos and gadgets. They're usually lightweight, sometimes fairly um, inexpensive. The big part for me is that they do increase um, independence and you can also integrate them with other maybe web-based apps or uh, laptops or Chromebooks. And the nice part is they're, for the most part, they're portable supports so students can take them uh, with them wherever they, uh, wherever they may be. The first thing I wanna talk about are smart paper devices um, and these are just two that I've used. One is by the company uh, Hamlin, which has the uh, free Scribzy app. So students can write and then use the app to save their notes or archive them in the cloud or share them. Probably the most popular smart notebook is the Rocketbook. Um, and what's unique about the, the Rocketbook is that uh, you write using what's called a Frixion pen, uh, which has thermal dynamic ink, uh, which makes it erasable. So students write um, on the paper with the Frixion pen. You can see this one is available as the Cornell method um, for, taking, for taking notes. And uh, what's unique about this template is you can see um, the students can write the title or the name of the note. Uh, they can also um, up in this corner, um, put a tag so they can tag it. Um, so let's say it's science, they, they could put science in there and tag the notes. And then after taking the notes, you'll see these seven icon, icons. All these icons are destinations that are configured using the Rocketbook app. So the students write the note, they scan it with the app. And then if, for example, the student took the pen and marked an X, on the rocket book icon that may be um, destination might be a folder in google drive and then um, everything gets archived and saved there you can see that you can you can send it to multiple cloud-based um, services so this can really help a student uh, stay organized for example this could be google drive science google drive math google drive language arts and then when the student has scanned, all they need to do is spritz the page with a little water, take a rag and um, wipe it clean. So it's really a very interesting um, solution. Um, I'm going to give you a link to this. So I don't want to um, um, take the time today to go through some of these MOOC videos, but they are here just to give you a better idea. Let me just click. So. Um, if I scan this with the, oh, if I scan this, this is what um, uh, it looks like. It saves it as a uh, PDF, um, which you can then do what you want with it. On this side, um, it's still in beta, but there's handwriting recognition. Um, so you can see it took the text here and it transcribed it. So. This becomes editable text. I can copy and paste it um, and open it up in Microsoft Word, Google Docs. So again, this could be a good way for students to have their notes read to them. Again, mileage may vary depending upon the student's handwriting. But again, this could be a good tool in classrooms <clears throat> where there's a cooperative um, teacher or co-teaching taking place or maybe the teacher takes the notes and then distributes them or saves them into a Google Drive that students can access. For classrooms, this, this is the Rocketbook beacons. The beacons are these four triangular orange pieces that um, adhere to a whiteboard. And then the teachers can write, up, you know, write their notes um, using a, you know, a, a marker, a whiteboard marker. And then the students can 
using their Rocketbook app, they can take a picture of it and again, organize it by putting it into um, uh, any cloud-based service like Google Drive, OneDrive. Um, so this could be a great solution. I know Stockton University is using this. They have this in every single classroom. Uh, this is a great way to deliver notes very, very uh, quickly and very um, effectively. And this solution is about somewhere between 12 Fifteen dollars for the for the set of four, and they they do have a, um, I guess a, a sort of uh, mi their microfiber adhesive, so you can peel them off and move them to another whiteboard if you wanted to. But for twelve bucks, uh, it's a great a great solution for disseminating notes in classes such as maybe higher level science and math classes. Um, so when we, when we talk about note taking, really the conundrum is, and many of you have worked with students who have learning challenges, so they often have trouble paying attention, um, their fine motor skills may not be great, and they have trouble simultaneously listening and writing and then organizing the information can be difficult. So one of the um, trends that we're seeing is the use of audio, and I'll talk about some tools that rely on audio. One of the nice things about audio is that, you know, students can, um, you know, write in many cases, just write keywords because the audio is time stamping what's being said at the time. Um, it also can be used with words or images. So with audio, student, students can um, draw pictures or images, uh, if, especially if they're in classes like, you know, science. Um, and the nice part is, is that because they can jump around, because these tools timestamp is students don't need to listen to the whole lecture. They can go right to the spot as if it was indexed or bookmarked. So um, probably the one tool that comes to your mind when you think about um, digital pens and audio is LiveScribe. Um, this is the pretty much the suite of their pens. Uh, the the LiveScribe Symphony and Agar are uh, Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth connectivity to um, the app in order to work. And the one that was released just last year um, is the LiveScribe Echo 2. The LiveScribe Echo 2 is sort of a self-contained device. So you basically, the student turns it on. Um, it has a microphone and speaker built in uh, that they can begin to take uh, notes and record audio at the same time. The LiveScribe Echo 2 um, does support Bluetooth. Um, so students can use their earbuds um, or, you know, a Bluetooth headset to listen to the contents. Uh, I'd have to say it's a, the LiveScribe Echo 2, I mean, it is a fairly girthy pen, and I, I have had some issues with Bluetooth um, connectivity. Um, so again, you may want to, you know, take a look at that in terms of how the student feels about using the girthier uh, pen. So there's just some of the, um, you know, some of the ways it will be used. Um, there is a Windows and Mac app, and then there's uh, uh, apps for Android and iOS. And this is just the advantage of the Echo 2. It's self-contained, microphone, speaker, and Bluetooth support for headset. I'm not gonna, okay. Another company that's in this space, maybe lesser known, um, but has a number of offerings is the Neo Smart Pen. Uh, these are just some of the pens. Um, their software does support, um, you know, a digital ink. It also uses a Bluetooth connectivity to a smart device, could be iPhone, Android phone, iPad, um, and um, or Windows uh, computer. And these are just some of the models. So utilizes Bluetooth um, when it's connected to um, a, a tablet or an iPhone, Android, uh, smartphone. Um, it also has the ability to record audio um, just using that device. Nothing else is needed. It uses a program called Neo Studio to save all the handwriting. And then you can also share your handwriting in the cloud. Yeah. For, for individuals that um, may not want to use uh, paper, um, some of you may be familiar with the boogie boards. Um, these are uh, inexpensive LED devices that uh, students um, can kind of doodle with. 
This takes the boogie board to the next level. You write on it with a, it actually is a, a Neo Smart pen, but it has a stylus tip. Um, and then when you're done, you take the uh, pen and you tap on the bottom right on a little icon. It then transfers what you wrote on the boogie board uh, to an app on your smartphone or iPad. Um, so for students that, you know, um, you know, want to move away from paper, this might be an alternative. This one does not support um, audio. It's just uh, for note taking. And uh, I, I have included a, a video um, and I'll, I'll give you a link, but I'm going to move on to the next one. Okay. So using audio, um, some of the top uh, contenders in this arena are um, Glean by Sonicent. Um, they, they originally made audio note taker. They've really pared it down to make a web-based app. I'll also show you, uh, talk a little bit about the Neo Rico, which is an audio recorder uh, that utilizes the Neo Smart Pen. And then um, one of the other trends we're seeing is using transcription services. One of the largest one in the United States is Otter AI, and um, another one in the UK that's focused primarily on education is Captioned ED. So um, with Glean, this is the um, interface. So where my mouse pointer is, um, in this case, I pulled in a white paper. This was a PDF, but uh, students can um, optimally, if they can get um, their a slide deck, whether it be PowerPoint or Google Slide or PDF, they can bring it in over here. Um, and then what happens is a student, they will um, post the slide and they can type their notes. Oops. They can type their notes um, in here all along while the audio is being recorded. These are bytes. And anytime you see a little break, it means that the teacher or the lecturer stopped for a second. Um, and what's nice is all your notes are synchronized to that point in time um, when they were um, when they were taken. So, for example, you can see that the person taking the notes they 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 marked this note as being important, and now the corresponding mark is over here. So, when they come into it, they can click on the the note, or they can click on the audio and queue it up and just listen to that part that they want. Students can also print and copy the entire transcript um, of their notes that they've taken. So this is a really ideal tool um, for students that are in classes where they're using um, like slide decks. It doesn't have to be used that way, um, but it is a great um, tool. So they really, minute they, they went back to minimalism. What were the minimal number of features that would be needed to create a successful note-taking uh, tool. This is all web-based. Uh, there is also uh, iOS and Android uh, app um, with this. So one of the biggest features that most students and AT folks asked for was for um, transcription. And so um, you'll notice now there's a little, a little text box that you can click. And when you click, it takes the audio um, sound bites and it converts it to text. Um, this is a post process process, so the transcription is not having is not happening live. So after uh, after you take your notes and you open up your this what they call an event, um, you would then click on that and then um, it Glean would do its magic and provide you the transcription. Um, you can then, if you wanted to, click over here to get a transcript, copy it, or save it as a PDF, or do what you want uh, with it. So this is a really nice feature, and they just recently added the feature for the, to allow students to import audio into this uh, into Glean, and then it will do the transcription um, and allow you to take notes as well. One of the nice parts about Glean is that even um, after you're, you know, you've been in the class, you can always come back and edit your notes, add more information, and make it, um, you make it just the way you want. So it's not cast in stone. Once the session ends, you can go back and uh, make the necessary uh, changes, which is really nice. 
Are there any questions so far? Any questions? All right, we'll continue. So this is a relatively new device. This is Rico um, from Neo Smart Pen, and this is a um, audio uh, recorder that uh, can synchronize with um, any of the Neo Smart Pens um, and uh, allow students to uh, queue up and listen to exactly what they want while they were, uh, you know, taking notes. So you, in, in order for this to work. You have your digital pen, uh, you, uh, you have the, the Rico, you have what they call a digital notebook, which is a paper-based notebook that has a watermark so that the pen can communicate. And then it syncs the written word with the um, audio. So this is what the student, the components um, of what the student we need to take um, into the classroom, uh, the Rico, uh, the Dymo pen, and one of the uh, notebooks and just gives you an idea of some of the capabilities. This has a mini RCA jack, so students could plug in a headset and listen to the contents of their notes. Um, it's got volume control and uh, it provides uh, feedback in terms of LEDs when it's recording. I'm just gonna play this. Hi, this is uh, Dr. Friedlander. And um, in this video, I'd like to show you the Neo Rico and the Neo Dymo Pen. Brian, I think when you muted yourself, you muted that too, because I can't hear it anymore. And you'll see there the we go. white, and also Perfect. you may have heard some audio. I now paired the pen to the Rico recorder. This is fairly lightweight, so a student could bring this into the classroom, uh, and they don't have to have their smartphone on, on to record the, um, the notes. And I'm going to use... This notebook, uh, students need to need to use the notebooks that are provided by um, the company. This is digital paper. It may be hard to see, but there is a watermark on each page so that um, it makes it easy for the device to um, know exactly where I am on the page. So just imagine I'm in a class and I want to record the notes. Uh, so I will be doing the speaking, but again, this could be a teacher doing a lecture, or this could even be like a YouTube video or a video that a teacher has put together, uh, especially as students are spending more time in remote learning. So I'm going to hit the record button. You heard that little audio and you see the red light. And now I am using the Neo Dymo Pen. And it's uh, it's linked uh, to the Rico, and I can basically timestamp my notes with audio. So this is ideal in um, lectures. It can also be used with uh, YouTube or in remote learning. It's not dependent on text so that students can even draw, you know, if they're in a science class, they can draw an image and then the teacher says, that is the nucleus. That is the cell 
the wall and it allows for nutrients to pass through the wall and exit the wall. When I'm done, I'm just going to press the record button. Now, um, just imagine on the studio, uh, you know, I took some notes. I can go back to my classroom or back to my home and tap on any of the text or images that I that I wrote and listen to the notes and audio queue up. It allows for nutrients to pass. So just going to, again, give you an idea of, you know, how, um, you know, beneficial having a tool like this uh, could be. And again, this one supports um, a headset. Uh, so the student can listen to this um, privately. Um, some other tools that can be really handy are voice recorders for recording lectures. This is um, a Sony. This is about a, I want to say, a forty-five dollar um, recorder. And what's nice about this one is you can see it has a USB uh, uh, A port built in, so students can take, you know, audio record their notes, plug that into a Mac, PC, Chromebook. Um, and, um, you know, basically download a, or actually drag an MP3 file um, out from there and then move it if they want to. They can you certainly listen to the MP3 file. But what's nice, too, is that they could use services like Otter AI or Word Online or Caption or, in this case, even Glean and drop the audio file in for full transcription. So it's a, it's a really nice um, solution. You notice here the image. They do have different profiles for sensitivity of the microphone. So this one is in a kind of a group or a conference. They do have some for classrooms. Um, so this is a really, uh, really nice, uh, lightweight device and relatively inexpensive. Um, I'm not gonna play the video, but um, if you have a Office 365 account, you can use the online version. And um, if you just go under the microphone, um, there's an area that says transcribe, and then you can drag in um, audio files and it will transcribe the text and then it allows you to move it right into Microsoft Word. I think at this point in time, they're offering 300 minutes a month, um, but if you want to test it out, um, it's you know certainly, uh, certainly free. So this is what um, the interface of Otter AI um, looks like. Um, it's very easy to use. If you have an account, you can also uh, set it to synchronize with your calendar. So when you come in, it will know, oh, you have a Zoom meeting coming up and all you, did, all you have to do is click um, or you can automate the process and it will automatically transcribe that online uh, meeting. This is the um, uh, new service uh, from a UK company called Captioned. Um, they do a really great job. This is their um, interface. They're really focused on education. And so the transcriptions are really, I have to say, are um, top notch. So over here, um, you can also bring in slides, PDFs. Um, this is where the transcription takes place. And then down over here, you can actually type notes as the lecture is taking place. And you can see it will put a timestamp as to where um, that is. And again, you can also export the text files um, and transcript uh, into other applications as well. But this is a this is definitely an, an, an app that you want to um, you know keep your eyes on. So um, when we think about the future of note taking, um, another trend that we're seeing, and I'll, I'll talk about it next, is the use of e-ink devices. Um, many of you are, probably have used e-ink since um, it is this display that's used um, by Amazon uh, in their Kindle. These are some of the popular uh, e-ink devices. There are lots of them. The focus um, of these devices is really for writing, taking notes. Many of these, are they're not like iPads or full-featured tablets. The idea of this is that it provides a long battery life uh, it's distraction-free, and it has a fantastic 
writing uh, experience, pretty much akin to what it would be like writing with a pen or pencil on a piece of paper. Um, about a month ago, uh, Kindle uh, Amazon just released the, what they call the Kindle Scribe, and this is basically a, um, a Kindle ebook reader, but also has a note-taking component. It has one of the sharpest screens um, in the marketplace. Uh, it has note-taking capabilities. It lets you annotate Kindle books and also annotate PDFs so students could uh, bring in PDFs and then annotate, highlight, write, um, write on it. Um, again, um, this is a, again, not, this is not meant to, um, uh, I, I guess, replace an iPad. It's really more, in this case, a reading and note-taking device with no notifications, no distractions. Um, Amazon has some work to do in terms of upgrading the software to bring it up to the feature set that you'll see in something like the Remarkable 2. Right now, you, you can set up folders and drop notes in the folders. There's no handwriting transcription, which some of the other um, uh, e-ink devices um, support, but that this is definitely um, so a tool uh, for students to use who are easily distracted who have pretty good handwriting and are looking for something to replace, um, you know, paper. Um, for personal um, scanning, uh, these are two tools that can be used for students to bring text from the outside into the, um, into a, let's say a Google Doc or um, Google Slide. So the first one is C Pen Reader. You can plug that in uh, with a USB cable and use it um, to, in, in the keyboard mode and bring in text. And then we have Scan Marker um, Reader, which can be used both as a reading tool with the web-based app reading component, as well as um, an app that will allow you to scan text into, um, in, into other digital environments. Uh, I mean, I've used some of these devices with students that wanna be able to pull notes from textbooks um, into um, a computer or a Chromebook and make them more accessible. I will, I'll leave, I'll, I'll leave you to that to watch another time. Oop. This is not necessarily note taking, but if you haven't, um, if you haven't seen or can read, it's, it's an incredible uh, tool for reading. So if you're working with students that are dyslexic, um, this little tool can uh, basically take a page of text and read it with no internet connectivity um, needed. It's very, really unique. Paper pen read was designed especially for... So I just wanted to um, kind of talk a little bit, and I'm sure many of you have been, um, you know, watching the news, reading the paper, um, I've come across this bot called ChatGPT. And I think we need to think creatively how we can use it with students with uh, learning challenges. So you can see the prompt I gave it is provide me with succinct notes on photosynthesis. And that's what the bot returned. And um, I did check it out. Um, I, I was able to use scan and read to read the, um, the, um, the, the, the paragraph that it returned. But there's lots of really interesting ways that we can begin to think um, how we might use um, something like chat GPT with students with uh, learning uh, disabilities and learning challenges. Um, you can um, utilize different prompts. So for example, um, if a student got a, um, a transcript with, with text, let's say from the teacher, they could use a prompt like, you know, summarize the following text and then chat GPT would summarize it for them. So this is certainly gonna be a tool that we are going to need some time to play around with. But again, this can be a really interesting tool for students uh, with learning uh, challenges. And um, I was actually just reading a study today and um, certainly um, students who use, uh, you know, do sketch noting, um, mind mapping, whether it be digital or um, use of pen and paper, uh, they tends to be more uh, retention of the material. This one is MindMeister, which I tend to use a lot. It's an online um, application but there's certainly a bunch of others. For those of you that have been in the field for a long time, uh, Inspiration um, is still being um, sold in the UK. As a matter of fact, 
they'll be at ATIA this uh, year. They came out with some new features and they have a remote desktop version that can be uh, used on Mac, Windows, uh, and PCs. Um, so it might be uh, an interesting application of uh, mind mapping or concept mapping. So um, just some things to think about is, you know, what are you hoping um, to capture? Um, you know, is a student using, you know, PowerPoint slide decks or Google slide decks? Do they want to pull information from books um, or journals? Because that will, you know, determine to a certain extent what tools you want to use. So here's just some, you know, interesting strategies. It could be PowerPoint or a slide deck. Um, so if you wanted to, um, whether you use a live scribe pen or the Rico, you can focus on working with the students um, to write keywords um, or develop legends with them so that they can just write those keywords and then use it as a, use it as a reference to go back and listen to the notes. So here's like an idea where you can take thumbnails um, and you know basically paste them into the digital book and then the student can use um, either Life Sprite Pen or the Rico um, and write the notes on the side uh, in the column. And then it's a great way to, in a sense, link the slide with the, with the notes. So that was in rapid succession. I, I hope you um, picked up or learned something um, new. There's my contact information. I just started a um, podcast called Innovative um, Technology. Um, and I'm actually using some AI um, to develop it, which is kind of uh, interesting. i uh, be glad to talk to you more um, about it. Um, but if you have any, any questions, I'm glad to answer any questions now. But if you want to get in touch with me, um, there's my email or my phone number. I'm glad to help you out. Ryan, thank you for going through that quickly, but that was a ton of information. That was really great. Uh, great. As, as we uh, roll towards the end here, if anybody has a question and you want to either drop it in the chat or you want to come on the screen, you could certainly do that as well. Ryan, I like that new feature of Glean. I haven't played with Glean in a while, and I really like that transcript feature of those audio clips. Yes. Yeah, it does a really it does a good job. And like I said before, for students that maybe just want to go in with their iPhone and just take a audio recording, they, after the fact, they can just download the audio file in there, and it will it will create that same working environment with the transcription as well. But yeah, it, they did a they did a really nice job to keep the features minimal, but very powerful features. Yeah, that's nice. I, the audio note taker was such a powerful tool, but the idea of now having it web based is huge. I think as we yeah, and think about there's how it almost rolls out. yeah, it's almost automatic. It's pretty incredible if you use the app on your Android or your iPhone um, to take notes, and then you go back like five seconds later on the web, it's synchronized already. You know, and everything's there. It's pretty amazing. That's it pretty will work also work offline as well, which is nice. I love it. I think that's awesome. Excellent. Well, any other any other thoughts or questions before we head out? Give everybody a chance to get them in there. Please reach out to Brian. Uh, if you have any other questions, check out his podcast. Brian, I will check out your podcast. I put it on my little to-do list right here on a sticky. Um, and to, and uh, the and the, um, the uh, see if you see if you can figure out what part of the AI I used. Okay. I love it. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. Yeah, that's really cool. A, I like this. Like a, I like that idea. Of this that's fun. Uh, like there's an Easter egg out. in there somewhere. That's great. Love it. Awesome. Everybody else. Well, all right. If we don't see any other questions, good. I'm glad that that was great. I'm glad that you like that. Um, Brian, thank you again. Everybody, thanks Always for spending the time with us today. Sounds and, uh, good. Hope to see you soon. All right. Take care. Bye. Thanks.